let me first of all disclose that I've done consulting work for Amazon on antitrust matters. Uh, there is indeed a big debate uh, on uh, the double role of uh, some uh, uh, hybrid marketplaces uh, as Amazon and also others uh, uh, as uh, hosting uh, third party products uh, on their platforms uh, and at the same time uh, uh, providing their own products. Uh, and uh, there is a view, sometimes called the New Brand Asian view, associated with Lina Khanna, suggesting that uh, there is a, a systematic incentive uh, for these uh, platforms to promote their own products, uh, uh, setting worse uh, conditions for uh, third party sellers. Uh, and uh, for, for instance, in particular, increasing uh, the commission rates uh, applied to these sellers. And this uh, can arm consumers uh, in the long run. From an economic point of view, there is a first obstacle to this uh, view due to the business model of these uh, hybrid marketplaces because they monetize uh, at the same time on third party products uh, through the commissions and of course on their own products through diet margins. So it is not obvious that there is an incentive to um, bias customers in one or the other direction. Uh, and uh, it is even less obvious that uh, if there is uh, a bias uh, in one direction, this goes against uh, necessarily the interest of consumers. Uh, there were some uh, papers uh, re recently published, uh, here I mentioned uh, some, focusing on this uh, issue. Uh, CAFAR and a policy paper uh, uh, did stress the, the importance of business models for uh, antitrust, antitrust uh, purposes. Uh, the other papers, uh, one, I have one from last year, uh, emphasizing both static and dynamic incentives and a platform that is there to stay usually as a, 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 an incentive to internalize both static and dynamic incentives of uh, its product introduction. There is a paper by Agu, uh, Te and Wright that is now forthcoming uh, that stresses uh, a, another aspect, uh, hybrid platforms uh, strengthen competition on the platform and this creates benefit for consumers in itself. And uh, they also stress other issues related to self preferencing and uh, imitation. However, uh, my talk today is uh, more related and, as a matter of fact, inspired by two papers that came out last year. One is by Yuzuke Zenio, who happens to be the discussant today, and the other is by Simon Anderson and Oslem Better de Folie. And uh, uh, these papers do a lot of uh, different things, uh, but uh, I see uh, the basic frameworks as providing a, a, a common framework that I think uh, it's uh, the appropriate one to uh, analyze the welfare impact of these uh, hybrid uh, marketplaces, because it uh, uh, is based on a, a model with product differentiation between all the products present uh, on the marketplaces. In these papers, uh, they use discrete choice models uh, uh, leading uh, to a logic uh, demand uh, systems, and uh, they uh, adopt monopolistic competition between sellers. This is becoming the standard uh, analyzing uh, platforms uh, for the simple reason that there are so many sellers on Amazon and also on other platforms that uh, this is not the natural way to go. With also endogenous entry of sellers to endogenize the, the, the set of products that are made available on these marketplaces. Now, these two papers uh, um, uh, reach uh, in their baseline frameworks uh, two different conclusions, and this is what inspired me to, to, to explore more of the issue. So in Zenio, so the two papers have a, a lot of different uh, assumptions, as a matter of fact. Uh, in Zenio, uh, that adopts uh, a specific commission on sellers, uh, the hybrid marketplace uh, is basically neutral, uh, does not change the commission applied to third-party sellers, uh, and is ultimately neutral uh, on uh, consumer welfare. While uh, um, Anderson and Better Foley adopt uh, ad valorem commissions, uh, as I will do, and this is the, probably the empirically relevant uh, assumption because uh, Amazon and others do adopt percentage uh, commissions. And uh, they emphasize that there is a systematic incentive of these hybrid marketplaces uh, to increase commissions on third party sellers uh, and through that uh, to reduce uh, uh, consumer welfare. And the mechanism is a demand shifting mechanism. Uh, when they introduce their own products, uh, they have an incentive to uh, raise the commissions on third party rivals uh, so that some demand is shifted to their own products where they make uh, more profits. Uh, so I tried to explore more this issue in a different uh, kind of model, uh, going back to the, the traditional micro foundations of uh, monopolistic competition models in the in, in in the sense of Spence and uh, Dixie Stiglitz, so with represented 
agent uh, micro foundation uh, that can deliver uh, uh, more general demand systems, uh, including the Logit uh, One, uh, but also other as the ISO Elastic or linear demand systems, uh, and try to understand whether in this more general uh, class of the demand uh, systems, uh, there can be additional mechanism. So let me anticipate the main uh, theoretical, this is a theoretical paper, of course, uh, points. Uh, first, I confirm something that is already present in those papers, so that in this uh, framework, uh, uh, the hybrid marketplaces for a given commission, so if the commission rates are not changed, uh, does not affect consumer welfare. Uh, this is a neutrality that uh, um, is inherited by a, uh, a class of models uh, with, uh, with free entry, as we will see. Uh, so any impact of these hybrid platforms on consumer welfare, and as a matter of fact, also on user welfare, because under free entry, they are the same, will happen through the changes of the commissions on sellers. If the commissions are increased, this will make consumers worse off through higher prices and less variety. If the commission rates are decreased, uh, consumer welfare will actually increase. And actually, uh, in this more general uh, uh, environment, uh, what happens is that there are two mechanisms that are working in opposite directions. One is a demand shifting effect, uh, as the one emphasized by Anderson and Bailey de, de Folie. And the other is actually a mechanism working in the opposite direction. I, I, I called, called it an extensive margin effect. And uh, the intuition here is that an hybrid marketplace introducing its own products is necessarily giving up to some sales of third party sellers and so to some commission revenues from these third party sellers, commission revenues that come for free in a, in a sense to the platform. And so it has an incentive to uh, reduce its commission rates, which can reduce the prices of uh, the sellers, uh, increase their gross profits and recover entry of some of these uh, sellers. It can also attract more purchases by consumers. And in this way, it can expand uh, commission revenues. The two mechanisms Federico, are working in opposite directions. Federico, sorry, yes. Federico, can I ask a clarifying question? It's uh, just yes. speaking. Uh, Actually, Amazon has got does three things. It's a marketplace. It sells. It's a retailer which sells product it buys from other people, and it also sells you know, uh, Amazon branded product. Uh, and when you when you're speaking about hybrid marketplace, I assume you have a marketplace and you've got like one of the two other activities. Which one are you focusing on? An hybrid marketplace is here defined as a marketplace that provides both own products and third party products on which it monetizes only through the commissions. Okay. So, so, so the, fact that Amazon, the fact that Amazon is a retailer doesn't play a role in your analysis. When okay, you, you, so when you say own product, do you mean Amazon, are you yes, thinking about yes. Amazon branded product? Or you, you, should, you should think as a private label products if you want. Okay. But uh, um, with slight modification, you can think also as an activity as a first party retailer. So, um, but the primary interpretation, if you want, can be in terms of private labels. So, products produced and, and commercialized okay, by the same platform, okay? Uh, which is uh, the same uh, kind of assumption that, as in these other papers. Um, uh, so, I was saying, so there are these two effects going in opposite directions. So, the result at the end is not obvious. There is a class of demand functions that is quite uh, prominent because it's the one with the isoelastic uh, demand function. So the, the, the standard um, uh, Dixie Stiglitz uh, case, where uh, when the marketplace and the sellers face the same constant demand elasticity for the products, uh, actually you have neutrality in the spirit of the Zenio paper, as a matter of fact, and the commission rates are not changed by an hybrid marketplace compared to a pure marketplace, one that doesn't sell its own products. Uh, and then you can have uh, results going in uh, one or the other direction. So uh, I will come back to this. Uh, let me mention some of the literature here. There are some papers uh, that uh, came out recently, quite interesting, uh, focusing also on other uh, aspects. Uh, this framework uh, is uh, related to work on stackable leadership with free entry. Uh, the leader here is the platform because it's setting the commission before all the others, uh, and it's also setting the prices of its own uh, products, as a matter of fact. 
and to the theories of monopolistic competition. Uh, uh, recently, there has been some uh, movement in this literature with, with uh, more general micro foundations that are usually applied in general equilibrium models of trade uh, macro. Here, I will borrow some of these uh, uh, methodologies that you will see from uh, work, uh, joint work with Paolo Bertoletti, applied in a partial equilibrium uh, context, which is the one uh, we care about. There are some, also some empirical papers uh, recently, structural estimation models based on the logic framework, which is quite tractable. Um, but they don't consider at the same time endogenous commissions and entry of sellers. So I think there is more interesting work to do in the empirical front. Ultimately, here I will leave you with uh, a clear uh, um, empirical prediction of, of this framework uh, that I already anticipated. So in this framework, uh, basically the impact of the introduction of uh, new products of the marketplace in its own uh, platform, uh, will uh, affect consumer welfare in a way that depends on whether the commission rates on others are increased or decreased. So a very precise uh, uh, prediction. And so one can empirically want to do that. This is a theoretical paper, but uh, uh, the, 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 the commission rates uh, set by Amazon are publicly available, especially for the last five years, uh, country by country and product category by product category. Uh, if you look at the United States, but uh, the picture is similar elsewhere, uh, you will find that in most, most product categories, uh, the commission rates did not change. There are some product categories uh, where uh, they were reduced, uh, and there are a couple of product categories where they were increased by, uh, I think, 2%. Uh, so overall, there is not, uh, I don't see a, a systematic correlation between um, uh, increasing commission rates and introduction of uh, um, products by Amazon, which happened in most of these categories, as a matter of fact. But there is empirical work there can, can be done uh, trying to uh, screen between the two different uh, um, consequences. Okay, so I will move to present the theoretical framework. So the theoretical framework is, is relatively simple, uh, the timing of the game also. Then uh, while uh, you go on with uh, the, uh, the analysis uh, to find the optimal the commissions, uh, is like an optimal taxation exercise. Uh, ultimately, things become a little uh, more complex and I will rely on intuitions. But uh, so let me uh, start from saying that this is a, is a model where uh, consumers uh, purchase a bunch of goods and goods the number will be actually endogenous and we will have monopolistic competition between the, the sellers so i will rely on a traditional tiers of monopolistic competitions but following recent uh, um, micro foundation uh, i will derive demand system and uh, not from the direct utility as in spence dixie stilitz but from the indirect utility, this is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the two methods are equivalent uh, in a sense, but uh, this will be quite uh, uh, convenient as you, you will see in a moment. So let me uh, first introduce uh, a, a price aggregator, uh, which will be part uh, of the indirect utility of consumers. The price aggregator uh, depends on the prices of all the products present uh, on the marketplace. And so you have to think of it uh, as a measure of the quality, if you want, uh, of the marketplace. And uh, the restriction that I will impose is that this is an additive price aggregator. So each product available in the marketplace has a price, and it provides an additional surplus to consumers, which is this V function. So it's a surplus function that is decreasing in the price and convex. And, um, and this applies to every good uh, present in the marketplace. H is an exogenous component from exogenous surplus. Jesus. So if you have more goods uh, or if you have lower prices of these goods, uh, the value of this price aggregator, the quality, let me call it uh, broadly speaking, uh, of the marketplace increases uh, and the other way around. And uh, given this, uh, let me define uh, the indirect utility of uh, uh, consumers uh, through a, a, a log linear version. So these are log linear preferences. So there is an outside good where you spend the rest of your income. And uh, this specification is actually also used by a recent paper by Nock and Schutz. In my paper, I actually use a more general version, but I find it convenient to use this because it's particularly tractable. And the, the, the reason is that uh, when you derive the demand system for all the goods, uh, you just apply the Rua identity uh, by basic properties of uh, preferences, uh, and you get uh, a demand system uh, as this one. So when the demand of each uh, 
good, uh, depends on a ratio. Uh, at the denominator, you exactly find the price aggregator. Now, this, uh, uh, with the, which depends on all the prices, but since we are going to consider monopolistic competition, every single seller will take this price aggregator as given because every seller feels itself negligible and cannot affect with its price choice uh, the overall quality of the marketplace. However, at the numerator, uh, you will uh, find uh, the, as you should, uh, the, the, the slope of the surplus function, uh, which depends on the price, uh, and uh, each seller understands that the price shapes the demand through this uh, aspect. Let me give you um, some examples uh, so you will uh, be convinced that we are in a very standard world. Uh, everything depends on this surplus function. So if the surplus function is a power function, like the price uh, to the power of uh, one minus epsilon, you get isoelastic demands. So this is the Dixie Stiglitz story, basically. Uh, if you have an exponential surplus function, you get an exponential demand. Notice that here I am not writing down the denominator where you have the aggregator, uh, because it's going to be taken as given by the sellers. But uh, if you consider that, you will see that the exponential surplus function generates a, a, a demand system, which is basically the logic the demand system within this micro foundation. The last example is also useful sometimes because it provides the generalization of the linear um, demand um, through the parameter gamma. If it's one, you get the linear demand, or you can get a very rigid or elastic demand. But these are examples. In general, you can take any surplus function or satisfying certain properties and you get a, a different demand system with different uh, uh, characteristics and the, the elasticity of this surplus function are what uh, will matter mainly. So let me uh, mention uh, the elasticity of the surplus, uh, zeta, tell us how uh, price changes are reflected in changes in the surplus of consumers. And the demand elasticity, which is the second uh, order elasticity, will of course affect the pricing. Now notice that these two elasticity in general can take different uh, shapes. In case of power super function, they are constant. In the logit uh, model, uh, they are uh, increasing the price and they are identical. And in general, they can be increasing or decreasing and they uh, determine the shape features of the demand system. There is also a relationship between the two that uh, I report there. So as I mentioned in the paper, I have a more general micro foundation, but uh, I will not discuss it here. Uh, in the paper, I also have products that are heterogeneous uh, on the marketplace. Uh, today, to make it a little simpler, uh, I will assume that every product has a marginal cost C everywhere, OK? And uh, they, uh, as I was saying to Jacques, uh, I will have uh, a, a number of products by the marketplace, M, this is exogenous for our purposes now. If there is an extension to endogenize which products you want to introduce uh, in the paper. And all the others, uh, the total N minus uh, M, uh, will be the, the products of the sellers, uh, and this number will be endogenized uh, in the model. So the timing, uh, the timing is the one you should expect. Uh, there are four stages, uh, and uh, there is a first stage in which the marketplace is setting uh, the commission rate, uh, tau, between 0 and 1, so ad valorem commission. In the paper, I have the extensive uh, to a specific commission to relate with the work of Zenio, adopting that assumption. But here, I will focus on ad valorem uh, uh, commissions uh, as uh, um, Anderson embedded fully. There is a second stage in which the marketplace is setting its own prices. Please try to remember that when you see an upper bar on the price P upper bar, for instance, generating a surplus V upper bar, I'm referring to a product of the marketplace. And here I'm assuming the same surplus function for all the product of the marketplace. Okay, upper bar, marketplace. Without the upper bar, I'm talking about price, uh, products uh, of the um, independent sellers. So notice that I'm assuming a commitment also on the prices here. This is uh, not necessarily the right assumption to make. Uh, it's giving a higher market power, if you want, to the marketplace. Uh, in the paper, I have an extension where uh, uh, all prices are set uh, at the end uh, simultaneously. Uh, and that uh, increases the chances that uh, an hybrid marketplace uh, increases consumer surplus. So here I will adopt this conservative, if you want, assumption. Commitment on commission and prices. Third stage, endogenous entry of uh, sellers on the marketplace. They pay fixed cost F and uh, they decide whether to enter or not. And uh, in the last stage, of course, I have the pricing of uh, all the, the sellers uh, under monopolistic uh, competition. 
Uh, in the paper, I have an extension to Bertrand competition. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the markups would be different, would be higher in that case. Uh, that applies if you have a limited number, of course, of, of, of sellers in some product category. Uh, but the spirit of the result doesn't change because the, the neutrality that I mentioned before applies also there. As a matter of fact, it also derived in a number of applications of free entry models with strategic interactions. And finally, just to give you an overview of what you will find in the paper, but we will not discuss today, uh, I have an extension to uh, endogenous spending in advertising by the sellers. Um, so that's a, a world where each seller can also invest uh, in uh, ads for product discovery to attract clicks uh, to its own product and possibly get it from uh, some other uh, potential uh, uh, sellers. And uh, there the focus uh, is uh, on how the uh, IB marketplace will affect the total payment of the sellers in commissions and ad fees. Uh, so it's a little richer, but uh, the, the, the spirit of the, of the result doesn't change very much. So we'll focus on the uh, baseline model. Uh, so if there are questions, uh, this may be a, a right moment. Uh, and uh, I will, of course, uh, start from the last uh, stage, uh, looking at the pricing of the sellers. So the sellers here face a certain commission, Tau, already chosen, and that the profits that you see in front of you at the denominator, you have the, this price aggregator, which affects demand, but uh, is taken as given in the monopolistic competition. Of course, uh, if the value of the price aggregator, the quality of the marketplace increases, uh, the profits of each single seller goes down uh, because it will sell less. Uh, but the price will be chosen to maximize the, the numerator, essentially. And the price rule is something uh, very um, standard that uh, where you have the demand elasticity. And uh, of course, the cost uh, and the commission with it are shifted into the final prices. Depending on the shape of the um, demand elasticity, you can have a full pass-through, incomplete pass-through, and so on. And you can characterize exactly how the price depends on the commission. Here I show you, just to give you an idea, the closed form solutions for the three examples that I, I, I provided before. The first is the classic uh, uh, Dixie Stiglitz uh, pricing rule, uh, and the, and the pass-through is uh, full. Uh, that's the case of uh, uh, power surplus so functions. The other two cases, uh, uh, the large demand and the generalized inner demand uh, imply incomplete pass-through. Um, but in general, uh, for any surplus function, you can uh, characterize uh, the relationship between the price and the commission. If you know that, you can understand uh, at the previous stage uh, how entry takes place. So let me remind you that this aggregator, the quality of the marketplace, uh, has uh, two components mainly. The surplus generated by the products of the marketplace and products with prices P upper bar, already chosen at this stage, and the surplus generated by all the, uh, all the sellers. And clearly, if you have more sellers, uh, you have higher quality, the profits of each seller will go down. So effectively, under endogenous entry, under zero profit uh, conditions, uh, what you will pin down is really the value of the aggregator which as you see here will depend on the commission, but, and this is the key, key aspect that actually applies also in the other two uh, papers and here is uh, just extended, uh, it does not depend on the uh, surplus generated by the marketplace with its own products. Uh, whatever the marketplace done with, does with its own products, there will be an adjustment in the number of sellers entering in, uh, on the marketplace, but the overall value of the aggregator will not change. This will actually depend only on the commission rate. Uh, now, with this micro foundation, this neutrality, uh, which applies in aggregative games uh, and uh, I mean, emerges in also in other application, uh, this neutrality is extended to consumer welfare because the utility is a function of the aggregator. And so uh, this implies uh, that uh, the pricing uh, uh, of the marketplace of its products does not affect in these models uh, the consumer welfare per se. The only channel through which uh, uh, consumer welfare is affected is through the commission. And as you see that the commission uh, is actually, is actually um, negatively related to the value of the aggregator. Of course, if you increase the commission, the profits of each seller goes down, there will be space for less entry and the quality of the marketplace will go down and the other way around. 
So this simplifies a lot the, the, the analysis in this class of situations. At the bottom, you also find an endogenous number of sellers, which of course you can derive from the above conditions. But if we know this, we know the pricing, we know the free entry, we can go to the marketplace and try to see what uh, happens there. So here I will uh, write the profit of the marketplace, uh, which is what we want to maximize, uh, choosing the prices uh, and the commission. So the first term is uh, the commission revenues, uh, the commission rate multiplied by the number of sellers, uh, which you have just endogenized, uh, and the revenues of each seller. And the second term is, of course, the profits of the marketplace from its own products, and the prices P upper bar is what we need to choose now. Uh, if uh, we use uh, uh, the free entry condition, uh, we can rewrite this, uh, this formula. Uh, let me just say that uh, the first uh, uh, term that you find in the profit function will be the, the profit of a pure marketplace, one that doesn't provide any of its own goods. It's just relying on third party sellers. So this is just commission revenues of a pure marketplace. And the, uh, the last term instead is the additional profits uh, that the every marketplace gets from uh, its own particular products, uh, where the key factor of this delta, I called it an index of differential profits, because it represents the difference between the profitability on its own products and the lost commission revenues on third party sales that are eliminated when you uh, sell some of your products. So this difference is what matters. It determines which products you want to introduce and at which prices. And now I will exactly choose the prices of the marketplace to maximize uh, this, uh, this, uh, this aspect. Uh, and uh, what will remain, it will remain that uh, these uh, differential profits will be decreasing in the commission uh, because if the commission is higher, the incremental profit that you make on your own provision of products will be lower. So what will be the prices uh, chosen by the marketplace maximizing these uh, uh, animal, you will get the price rule uh, as the one you see. Uh, in general, uh, here uh, you will have uh, a different demand elasticity for the products of the marketplace. But uh, even if it was the same, if they were providing the same uh, products, basically marketplace and sellers, uh, here there are two effects going on. First, the marketplace is not paying the commission. So this uh, pushes toward a lower price choice. Second, the marketplace has a lower opportunity cost of increasing its prices because the demand that is lost goes to third party sellers where there is a monetization through the commission. And this pushes for higher prices. So in general, we don't know whether the marketplace, I mean, depends on the particular micro foundation, we set higher prices or lower prices. This is an example with constant demand elasticity and actually, uh, everything depends on whether uh, the marketplace faces a, a more elastic or a less domestic uh, demand. If they face the same uh, demand elasticity, then they will set the same prices. In the paper, there is a discussion of uh, conditions under which uh, the marketplace will set an higher or lower prices. And it depends on the shape of the two mentioned elasticities. But I will not go deep in this uh, because it can be interesting from a descriptive point of view. But the neutrality that I mentioned before implies that uh, the actual price will not affect directly consumer welfare. All we care about is to go back to the profit of the marketplace and find the commission rates that maximizes them. And then we need to understand whether a hybrid marketplace or one providing more of its own products will increase or decrease the commission rate. And so this is the, 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 the same expression of the profits that they have shown before. The, the, the point is that we know how the price depends on the commission from the pricing of the sellers. We know how the price aggregator depend, depends on the commission from the free entry. We also know how the delta depends on the, on the, on the commission. So we just have to maximize this animal. In general, there will be a first order condition that uh, I will not show you because it's a little big. But uh, the point is that if you are pure ma uh, uh, market base, you maximize only the first part uh, because that's its profit. And if you're in a hybrid marketplace, uh, you have to consider also the additional profits uh, from uh, your uh, products, uh, depending uh, on, on, on the products you are, you are providing. And here, uh, however, uh, both the numerator and the denominator, the delta and the, the price aggregator, as I've suggested before, are decreasing in the commission rate. So in general, we cannot really say whether you want to increase or reduce the commission. 
you, we, you, you need to, to, to look case by case or find some particular uh, rule or example to, uh, to, to understand better. Here I will show you, given the limited time, I will show you the case of the case, the example that I, I have mentioned uh, more times uh, is the case uh, with the elastic constant uh, uh, demand elasticity, is the Dixie Stiglitz case, if, if you want. And uh, if you consider this case, uh, this is the commission rate that you will find for a pure marketplace. It's an implicit condition, but um, the right hand side is decreasing. So pretty much you have always uh, an interior solution with it zero one. And uh, this commission is decreasing in the demand elasticity of the sellers as you should expect. And if you are an hybrid platform, so you provide your own additional products. Uh, and here I assume that uh, you have uh, possibly a different demand elasticity epsilon bar. The new uh, optimal uh, commission for the hybrid platform is uh, given by the formula you find here. Now, if the two elasticities are uh, identical, uh, you get the same uh, commission rate. So neutrality as uh, in Zenio, as a matter of fact, in a different uh, uh, environment. Uh, however, uh, in this case, uh, if the marketplace uh, is facing a more rigid demand for its own goods, uh, and this could be the case, for instance, because customer uh, um, Amazon, uh, as a, in, the, in this example, has a bigger reputation for uh, shipping services or uh, post sale services. If this is facing a more rigid demand, uh, it will reduce the commission compared to third party sellers. And uh, this will uh, increase uh, uh, consumer welfare. The other way around, in the opposite case. Uh, so what is the intuition uh, that if the marketplace is facing for its own provision of goods uh, a more rigid demand, uh, it will exploit this setting higher markup, but they will uh, compensate uh, uh, customers by reducing the commission rates uh, on uh, third party products, uh, which will reduce uh, their prices, uh, but will recover entry of some of these uh, sellers uh, and will uh, promote uh, attract more purchases uh, by consumers. Uh, and this ultimately will recover more uh, uh, commission revenues uh, on the other side. Um, so this is an example that clearly shows that uh, things can go in one or the other direction. Here you get the, the general rules uh, for uh, the uh, platform. Uh, so here uh, this uh, formula depends on other elasticity, the demand, the surplus elasticity, the pass-through elasticities, and this elasticity can be different between sellers uh, and the marketplace. So as you can imagine, the comparison becomes a little uh, more uh, uh, difficult uh, and uh, in the paper, there is a, a, a discussion of that. Uh, here, uh, I would like to mention, uh, first of all, uh, that uh, I confirm, um, of course, the, the results by Anderson and Beto de Folie in the sense that in the case of a logic demand system, uh, which uh, in my notation uh, can be easily uh, found because the surplus and the demand elasticity are identical, the second formula simplifies and you get the result by Simon and Oslem that uh, the hybrid platform always set higher commissions than a pure uh, platform. Uh, however, in other cases, you may have the opposite. For instance, in the third example that I mentioned, uh, with the generalized linear demand, you can actually get the, the opposite. So the, the, the Ultimate point is that depending on the preference, if you want, or, or the structure of the demand system, an hybrid commission could have an incentive to increase the commission rate on third sellers to shift demand toward itself or to decrease them to actually attract, recover entry of some sellers and expand and expand the commission revenues through that uh, channels. Uh, and uh, in the paper, don't worry, I will not go into details, but in the paper, I have a more general uh, ver uh, versions of the model. Uh, one I would like to, to mention, since I, I see I, I have still a couple of minutes. Uh, and this is one where uh, you see the micro foundation is not the log linear I had before. Uh, it's a little more general. Uh, there is a parameter K that represents the elasticity of demand of consumers uh, with respect to the quality of the marketplace. And here, if this goes to zero, you go back to the log linear model. But when this parameter becomes bigger, I still have that formula, but I will not go in the details. But the point is that when the demand of consumers is highly elastic to the quality of the marketplace, uh, it's, it is more likely that uh, the Ivory Commission will reduce uh, the commissions because it has an incentive to attract more purchases uh, by 
uh, consumers. Um, uh, so this is a, 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 an additional version. So I, I mentioned already the extension that uh, you will find in the paper. If there are questions, we can talk further about them. Um, one is actually analyzed in a different paper, uh, and it's about uh, competition between platforms. Uh, platforms that uh, are allowed also to have a tool that here I didn't consider, which is uh, subscription fees. So Amazon Prime is a typical example. Consumers pay to access a, a say, superior service. Uh, the results uh, that uh, I had here are pretty much are translated in that uh, environment. Actually, in a world where uh, um, platforms are uh, device funded or uh, um, funded with also uh, payments by consumers, there is an higher incentive for the platforms to uh, internalize the interest consumers in their choices. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, analyzed in, in, in another paper. Uh, and so I will conclude by uh, reminding that, uh, so what uh, in this exploration I could uh, find is that uh, for a large class of, of, of demand systems, with this micro foundation, uh, I can confirm the, uh, the, the fact that for given commission, the commissions do not change much. The same fact that the marketplace introduces its own products does not affect consumer welfare because there is an adjustment through the number of sellers that leaves overall the, the gains from variety because that's what we are talking about in the monopolistic competition unchanged. Um, this is a, a neutrality result that uh, was found in, in models with strategic interactions uh, and free entry uh, and applies uh, in, in this, under this micro foundation. And uh, uh, however, uh, welfare mechanism work through changes in the commissions, but in, 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 in theory, there is not a systematic tendency to uh, increase the commission rate because there are there is a, a mechanism that I have emphasized that works in the opposite direction. It could be uh, compensating the first one or um, also dominating uh, the first one. Ultimately, this I think is an empirical issue. Uh, our commission rates increased where market basis, in this case Amazon. Uh, expands uh, its activity, expands uh, its uh, share uh, of the market, uh, or they are decreased, uh, or there is nothing going on. So the, whether there is a systematic correlation across product categories, so it's not about one particular product category, that, but across product categories, that should be the, re the relevant question from an empirical point of view. And with this, I exhausted my time, so I will uh, give back uh, uh, the floor to the moderator, Oslem. Thank you very much, Federico. It's uh, very well on time. So we have uh, Yusuke Zenio uh, as a discussant. Five minutes for your discussion, Yusuke. And then I have already collected a couple of questions for Q&A. Thank you, Aldrin, and thank you, organizers, for having me. I am Yusuke Zenio from Kobe University, Japan. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here as discussant for Federico's very excellent paper. Uh, the paper provides a general model for consumer preference that enables to assess the welfare impact of first party entry by platform owner on consumer surplus. Uh, because Time is limited, so let me ask my question. I have two two questions today. Two two questions. I think uh, the first one is related to the platform's private incentives for the choice of price elasticity for its first party goods. An important message from Federico's study is that price elasticity matter when it comes to the assessment of first party selling by platform. Uh, more specifically speaking, if first party products have less elastic demand than third party goods, first party entry is more likely to improve consumer surplus. This is a nice result for conventional policy However, uh, at the same time, in the present model, most elasticities for first-party goods and the third-party goods 
are considered as fixed exogenous parameters. So uh, epsilon and epsilon bar that are considered as parameters. So I am wondering what happens if the hybrid platform is allowed to endogenously decide the level of price elasticity for first party goods. If the platform has incentives to sell first party goods with less elastic demand than third party goods, its platform's private incentive is desirable in terms of consumer surplus. However, if the platform, hybrid platform has the opposite preference, such first party entry by platform owner is expected to reduce consumer surplus. If this latter outcome prevails in equilibrium, uh, there is a need for some sort of regulations about the first party entry by platform owner. So uh, my question is the uh, endogenous decision making by platform on regarding price elasticity for fast party goods. Uh, this is my first question. And uh, next, uh, let, let me move on to my second question. My second question is about uh, the, the seller side of two-sided platform. In the present model, Federica assumes that all third-party sellers are fringe, so very small sellers. So any changes in their pricing do not affect the aggregate and uh, do not affect consumer surplus directly. And because of the free entry assumption, in equilibrium, the seller surplus is always equal to zero in the present model setting. So I wonder if uh, you can consider the presence of big sellers in addition to fringe small sellers. So for example, the simplest way to, do, to, to address this issue is to add one big seller or a killer seller into the current model setting. And uh, one can consider that the, that, that big seller is making a pricing decision at the same time when the hybrid platform does. Subsequently, and after observing those pricing decisions made by the big seller and uh, the hybrid, set, hybrid platform, fringe seller are going to make entry decision and the pricing decision as in the current model setup. If this extension is possible mathematically and analytically, uh, we can make the further, dis further discussions about uh, the effect of first party entry on the seller side, not only on consumer side. I think this uh, second extension will make your policy implications much stronger than the pre present one. 